The Kaival E20. Whoever named this little vacuum probably could have been more creative. So I renamed my little robot vacuum to Whiskers 2000. Ever since it got a name it could be proud of, it's been performing even better. Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and this video is going to be all about this robot vacuum right here. We just moved to this house now, and I don't have a vacuum yet. Kaival reached out to me to see if I would do a review, and of course I would, especially since I'm, I've been always interested to see how these robot vacuums perform. Are they actually worth it, or do you have to end up vacuuming after them anyway? So this is a great opportunity to find out. This vacuum is model E20. They also have model E30 and 31. And the difference between them, this one just randomly drives around and vacuums everything. E30 maps the perimeter and it does smarter vacuuming. So I guess it gets the job done faster. And E31 also has a mop attachment, which is pretty cool. It can mop the floor as well. This is the cheaper of them. This is the model E20. And I don't know about you, but I get bored with unboxing videos, so Let's just do a time lapse on this. And I'm back. This is what was inside the box. Here's the main event itself, the robot vacuum. It came with this little cardboard. I'm not sure what this is for. Pretty sure it's just filler. You got the little bumper guards so it doesn't break on shipment. A little sticker that needs to be pulled off. And it only has two buttons up on top, the power button and the home button. Let's just quickly check out the underside. We got the brushes here, the wheels, another wheel over here, sensor so it doesn't fall off of stairs, the bumper for when it crashes into the walls. And here we're gonna put our brushes in. So it comes with four brushes, two spare and two you put on right away. Okay, that's it. And then there's another power button right over here. So that of course needs to be on as well. And the vacuum is ready. Then it came with manuals, instruction guides, quick start guides, comes with a cleaning brush with a little cutting tool as well. If you get some hair on there that's stuck or like a string of carpet, you can cut it off with this. Combs, brushes to clean it up inside. Here's the spare brushes. Comes with a magnetic strip as well. So if you don't want the vacuum to go to a certain area, you could just put this magnetic strip there and the vacuum will not cross this line. So it's a pretty cool idea. The only thing I don't really like is that you can't just put it down. It's not too heavy. You do have to use these little sticky things to pretty much stick it to the floor so it doesn't move. Otherwise, every time you walk past it, if you bump it, it's gonna move. There's an extra HEPA filter with a little sponge. It comes with a cool little remote from it as well. And this is Wi-Fi enabled, the vacuum, so you can use Google or Alexa with it, but we already have enough Wi-Fi devices in the house. So I'm probably not gonna hook up the vacuum to it. I'm just gonna use the little remote, but it is an option if you're into that kind of stuff. And then this piece right here, this is home sweet home. This is where it goes to sleep. So the charging port and the charger that comes with it. And before it goes home to charge, let's just give it an initial trial run See how it works. I just, I'm just kind of curious how loud this thing is. So our first impressions are pretty good. The vacuum does look nice. The glass top is a great finishing touch. It's supposed to have really strong suction power. And I guess we'll do some testing and figure out if that's true or not. And it has an 150 minute runtime, which as far as I could tell from other vacuums that I looked at, that is really good. That's one of the best times I've seen. Okay, it went to our bedroom. That's a little too far. I'm gonna tell it to go home and let's see, let's see how long it's gonna take it to come home. As for the noise wise, it's not loud at all. It's probably like a third of the noise a regular vacuum would make. When the vacuum is going home, it slows down considerably and the little lights on top turn orange. And then it just searches its way home. So in our house, we don't have any carpet. All we have is tile, hardwood floor, and a couple of rugs. So maybe we'll spill some rice or something else and test how it works. And then we'll try it on the rugs, over wires, and do some different tests in these next couple of days and see how it behaves. We have one child, but no cats or dogs, no pets. Only occasional unwelcome guests like centipedes and millipedes, occasional cockroaches, and that's about it.
Okay, so it's been about a week now and we had plenty of time to play with Whiskers 2000 and here is the observations we made while testing it out. First off, my son rather enjoys it. It started out with the vacuum chasing him, but now he chases it and everybody has a good time. It's really frustrating to watch it. So if you're sitting on the couch and watching this thing vacuum, just it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna be frustrated. Sometimes it'll vacuum the same corner for like 10 minutes and you're just sitting there thinking, oh, come on, man, just go vacuum the other side of the room. But eventually, you know, after it runs for about 140 minutes, it eventually will cover most of the floor. Once it's done vacuuming and it's going home, or if you press the home button on the remote, sometimes it takes it a really long time. It struggles going home. It can get stuck in a corner and it'll just stay there bouncing around for like half an hour. And once in a long time, it'll actually die before ever making it home. So in other words, not the brightest bulb on the block. But that being said, usually, usually it does make it back. Just a heads up, it does get stuck on cords. So if you have any loose cords laying around from your TV or chargers or whatever else, you do have to pick those up or tuck them away. Otherwise, this thing will get stuck on them. We also noticed that the lighter rugs that we have end up getting pulled around by it a little bit too. So we would come back and notice that the rug is a couple of feet away from its original position. The suction power is as good as advertised. It sucks everything up no problem. Although with the bigger debris, it kind of tends to grab it and just drag it to a different spot and drop it off, especially if there's like a little ledge or if it's going on a rug, it'll drop those big pieces of debris there and then keep going. But we've noticed that after a few passes, when it goes back and forth, eventually it does suck that stuff up as well. But the smaller debris, it sucks everything up no problem. One thing we noticed that is a little bit annoying is that the whiskers tend to scatter things around. That was especially noticeable with rice. So we dumped rice on the floor just to test it out. And we noticed that whenever it's going across the rice, the whiskers kind of fling that rice away. Eventually it does pick everything up except the spots that it can't reach. But perhaps this is not as big of a problem on carpet as it is on hardwood floor or tile. Cleaning it is actually super easy. All you gotta do is just take that container out and dump everything out. Since we don't have any pet hair or carpet, the container doesn't really get completely full. The provided brush helps with the cleaning of the screen, but after a few cleanings, I realized that really I do almost as good of a job with just my fingers, so I pretty much just started cleaning it with my hand instead. As for the wheels and the brushes, hair and whatever else does readily stick to them. And after running it for the first time, I already had to clean them up. There was a bunch of hair wrapped up around them. But perhaps this is due to the vacuum exploring the area beneath our beds, which typically doesn't get vacuumed. We tested the runtime. We ran it a couple of times until it completely died. And each time it lasted about 140 minutes, which is pretty close to the promised 150 minutes. But it probably saved some juice for its sometimes very long journey back home. The remote also gives you the option to control the vacuum manually, which does come in handy. And honestly, it's just kind of fun to have a remote controlled vacuum. I played with it for a while. It also has a spot clean or area clean feature. Pressing that makes the vacuum go in circles round and round with an expanding circle to clean a specific spot. I suppose this would be useful if something like rice or cereal got spilled on the floor. Another cool feature is the edge cleaning. Selecting this makes the vacuum go around the perimeter of the room and clean all the edges. Of course, since it is a round vacuum, it does not reach things in the corners. And that just about sums up the review. So our overall opinion on the Kaival E20 is that it's a great little vacuum, but the most important part, knowing that I know now, would I buy this thing again? The honest answer is probably not, unless it's on sale. But to be fair to Whiskers 2000, I think part of the reason why I say that is because the house we're in right now is smaller and mostly hardwood and tile floors, no carpet. Maybe if we had a bigger floor area, more to vacuum, perhaps I would have had a different opinion. So that was my thoughts on the Kaival E20. I hope you found this review video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time.